Today, I'm going to show you what photogrammetry is and how we can use it in our next projection mapping project. Whenever we are going to start a 3D projection mapping design, we need to have a solid understanding of what we are going to be projection mapping onto. One common way to do this is to use a laser scanner to create a point cloud of what we are going to project on. Then, you can take the point cloud and convert it into a mesh. From this point, it is fairly easy to apply any textures that we want to the surface as well as add any effects. These devices use a spinning laser to determine how far each point is away from the sensor. They also may use a RGB camera to map the color data onto each one of those points. Unfortunately, these scanners are not very accessible and are oftentimes extremely expensive in the tens of thousands of dollars. Also, they can be quite bulky and difficult to use. Thankfully, there is a much more accessible technology called photogrammetry. To better understand how photogrammetry works, let's go ahead and take a brief look under the hood at what it does. Imagine that we have a set of these three photos. If we try to line them up, we will see that we cannot make them match no matter how hard we try. This is because they were taken at different angles. What photogrammetry does is use a computer algorithm to determine how these photos were taken in relationship to one another. Then, with this information, it can calculate the three-dimensional mesh that must have been present to result in these three photos. It will then output that mesh with the RGB data applied to it. This is very useful to us because we only need a camera in order to capture the object that we want to scan into the computer. In order to convert our photos into a 3D model, we are going to need a photogrammetry software. If you're on Windows, you'll want to look at Alice Vision, which is an open source piece of software. If you're using a Mac like I am, you want to use the Apple's Object Capture. Object Capture is a great photogrammetry tool that was just introduced in the most recent OS, Mac OS updates. It also takes advantage of the Apple Neural Engine that is included with the new M1 line of chips, making photogrammetry extremely fast. Now let's talk about how we want to take our photos. We don't need any fancy camera. In fact, I just use my cell phone's camera. There are a couple of things that we need to watch out for when we are taking these photos, however. We want to avoid any surfaces that have excessive reflection, such as mirrors. We also want to make sure that the lighting is as flat as possible. If you are taking photos outside, try to do it on an overcast day. If you are taking photos indoors, make sure that there are no bright light sources that might make the camera to expose incorrectly. With photogrammetry, the more photos the better, because this gives more data points for the algorithm to attempt to find our surface. We want to take photos of what we want to capture from multiple angles and multiple depths, making sure that there's not too much deviation in position from the previous photo. Now that we have our photos, let's drop them into a folder on our computer. I will leave a link below to Alice Vision, as well as a program called PhotoCatch that uses Apple's object capture. After opening PhotoCatch, I need to click on the folder of where we stored our images. After we select our images, PhotoCatch will perform the photogrammetry process. Once the process is complete, select OBJ as the file type and click Save. The photogrammetry scan is not going to be very clean, so we need to do some post-processing to it. I will be using a program called Blender 3D, which is an open source 3D modeling software. We just need to import our OBJ file into the scene. Next, we need to add a smoothing modifier and change the amount to 1.5. This will make the surfaces of the scan less rough. At this point, we're going to want to do much more cleaning of the scan, and there are many good tutorials online about how to do so. Since I was short on time, I only used the smoothing modifier, so my scan will look a little rough. Now that we have our smooth object, we can proceed with the traditional 3D projection mapping. If you'd like to learn more about 3D projection mapping, check out my previous video here. For this demonstration, I simply used Unity 3D acting as my 3D projection mapping software. I went ahead and I did a couple of different effects using the 3D object. First, I added a directional light into the scene, 
and changed the angle to make it look like the time of day was changing. Second, I added a point light and moved it around in the scene to see how it would interact with the 3D geometry. I then added a 3D sphere and just to see how it would interact with the shadows of the 3D object as well as pass through our wall. Lastly, I decided to play around with some particle effects. And with that, we have successfully used photogrammetry to create a 3D projection mapping design. If you found this video useful, feel free to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing to support the channel. And I will see you next time.